We haven't seen you since last year. We're back. It's Wednesday, January 4th. It's RVNN Live, and today we are joined by the guys of F5Live.TV. This is RVNN Live, brought to you in part by Pet Hub and GoToMeeting. Today's program brought to you by Pet Hub. Protect your pet for pennies a day with critical contact, medical, and dietary information on a smartphone scannable ID tag. And by GoToMeeting affordable online meetings that work so you can do more and travel less. Courtney, you would think on live television that I would be able to figure this out week after week, but that's, uh, that's, not, that's not, uh, not the case. Guys, do you ever have problems like this? Yes, every show. <laughs> <laughs> every show. So listen, thanks very much for, uh, for joining us. You know we're going to be seeing uh, a, we're going to be seeing a lot of each other here uh, in the next uh, 10, 10 days or so um, as we're there at the Consumer Electronics Show. Absolutely. Uh, when are you guys getting in? Well, we're going to have uh, kind of a phased advance uh, here. I'm going to head out on uh, on Friday, and uh, let me switch over to Courtney. Courtney gets to take the long and scenic route. Yeah, n well, not so much on the way in. I leave here. It's this whole time travel thing. I leave here on Saturday. I live in uh, South Bend, Indiana. I leave at 9.15, and I uh, miraculously end up in Las Vegas at 11.45. So uh, you can do the math there. Obviously, I have a couple layovers, but uh, I'm excited to get there, and as soon as I get there, I'll be put to work, I've been told. Okay. Well, listen, one of the things that uh, I wanted to, to go ahead and have a chance to introduce uh, people at RVNN uh, to our audience, introduce uh, uh, your company because you guys are going to be a part of the tech podcast team that's going to be covering a consumer electronics show. What can you tell me about uh, your new name and uh, the old name and why you have a new name and uh, what uh, what is uh, Plugins? Sure. Well, uh, for the last four and a half years, we've been called Plugins Live Radio, despite the fact that for the last year we've broadcast on video. So the name didn't quite fit anymore. So uh, we have rebranded from Plug It's Live Radio to F5 Live. And um, the first show that we'll be broadcasting under the new name will be this Sunday, the day before the uh, CES actually kicks off. And, um, but the, the website's all up and running. Everything's been rebranded. But yeah, the reason for the change is because, well, well, the radio aspect, the audio aspect, isn't quite as big as it used to be. Time, times change. Now, Courtney, when you began your career, uh, you actually were looking to start out in radio, correct? I did. I went to school for radio, and I thought, I don't want to be in a box the rest of my life. And then look at me. Yeah, well. Still in a box or yeah, something. Here, here you are. Are you excited about CES? Me? Yeah. Yeah, I am. I'm excited. So I've heard I'll, I'll be at the pool a lot, relaxing, and uh, showing up to do some on-air stuff here and there. So it sounds like fun to me. Yeah. Uh, what do you think, guys? <laughs> yeah, not quite the way that works out. It kind of sounds like she's expecting her own trailer, too. Yeah, uh, my own trailer. I think I might go see the new Beatles, uh, Cirque du Soleil, yeah. relax a little. And, and we did get the memo about the fruit, uh, the fruit bowl. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you guys are actually going to be close to us. You're going to be at the stratosphere, not uh, not in the same neighborhood, kind of. Yeah, we. Uh, this will be our second year at the stratosphere. Um, it's close enough to the convention center to not be a pain to get there, but far enough away that you don't feel like you're at work while you're away. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. So is this your third, fourth CES? So uh, how many how many shows have you been to? This will be our second doing it the way we're doing it, um, you know, on the floor, doing reports all week, that type of thing. Okay, okay. Um, so, so we, we have covered it every year, but this is our second time doing it mm -hmm. <laughs> like this. <laughs> So now Courtney is uh, kind of new to this. She's got uh, years of broadcast experience, but uh, CES is going to be maybe a little bit different. What do you think's the the biggest um, adjustment that Courtney's uh, going to be uh, making here in the next uh, ten days or so? 
Okay, well, I suppose before we even get to CES, we should start with what happens when you're getting there. Um, partially what I'm talking about is if you happen to walk any of the distance from where you're staying to any of the, the venues, you're going to run into a lot... There to the side. Oh, sorry. No, no, no I, w I was, 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 just, uh, was just watching. Uh, Scott, he seemed kind of amused by the notion of walking someplace. No, nope, oh. I just know what's coming. Okay, Courtney, what, no. do you, what do you think? I should show them my shoes I've picked out. Yeah. Okay, I'm not sure how no. we, I'm Anyways, not sure go how we can do Anyways, go that. on, John. <laughs> I, I Tell me what to expect. The CES planning meeting. <laughs> but, uh, John, so on the way there, you're going to go through a bit of, uh, a bit of trials and tribulation, uh, mostly being accosted by, like, Hispanic people that are doing this. They're going to walk up to you, they're going to have business card size things in their hand, and they're going to go, and they're going to try <laughs> to take them. And there's going to be millions of them, and it will feel like the zombie oh, Courtney, what was that chuckle about there? <laughs> we call those click clicks. I know exactly what you're talking about. So, thank you. Nice. <laughs> so, here's what you do, because here's what we've done. Uh, we have, in fact, had our business cards on us, and when one of them comes up and does the click click, we we have our cards. We look at them, we hold them out, and we say trade, and they go okay, and then we trade all of our business cards for their business cards, and now they hand out our cards. Nice. Works out pretty well. That's a good idea. <laughs> Well, it does sound like it might have some uh, some uh, some potential, at least from an entertainment standpoint. Yes, it's certainly fun. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, huh, Andy, I don't know. I, I'll see if Andy's up for trying that. As far as CES itself is concerned, the thing to be prepared for is really the sheer size. Yeah, it's uh, the scope is pretty massive. Uh, just one hall, uh, like the North Hall, for example. Uh, I mean, it's, it's kind of hard to put into words, to be honest. One thing I would say is, besides some nice shoes, I would definitely travel light. Uh, last year, I think we overdid it a little. Uh, and by a little, I mean a lot. So uh, it was it was pretty taxing. You know, by the end of the day, our, our backs were pretty uh, worn out and sore. And at the end of the third day, you know, it was um, we were pretty much running on hopes and dreams. So, so what uh, what sort of things uh, were in the uh, backpack uh, when you started out that uh, weren't there, say, a uh, day and a half later? Uh, well, laptops, for one. Um, I actually, front, on press day last year, I ended up having my laptop with me. Um, and for some reason, I wrote an article and posted it on my Palm Pre at the time, uh, and it was painful, but it worked, so after carrying that around all for press day, when the convention actually started, uh, that kind of took a hike, and uh, my phone kind of turned into my premature tablet laptop. Ah. So what I'm looking for is um, outlets on the wall, and to bring my phone charger is what you're telling me. Oh, yes. Yeah, and we, we also had about three phone batteries apiece, uh, which really came in handy, so... That would be. Yeah. How much uh, water did you uh, end up uh, end up carrying, or what would you recommend as, as if, if Courtney's going to go out, uh, say, for uh, for a leisurely afternoon of uh, of interviewing? Well, uh, definitely start the day bringing at least a bottle of water with you, and um, whenever you happen to make it past one of the press rooms, stop and get another one. <laughs> Anytime you happen to walk past, because you're going to want it all day. I, I have heard, and I, I, I said, you know, can I bring this guy and, um, you know, save a tree or two and, uh, you know, not, not a tree, I guess, uh, the environment a little bit. And they said, no, because you'll probably lose it. So I should ditch this and just go for the water bottle. The press Unless room, you've got the water a, bottle. A place pack for a water, for that type of water bottle, yeah, yeah. Regular strong cap is going to be a lot easier. Gotcha. Yeah. Noted. 
So, so if you were in the uh, end of South Hall and you needed to go to North Hall uh, during one of the exhibit days, how long would you, uh, how, ma how, how many minutes would you allocate for that little uh, trek? Oh, dear Christ, well, from one end of the convention center <laughs> to the other? Um, uh, yeah. 40, I mean, 45 I minutes I think that reaction more. told it all. Uh, you, you, Courtney, you've got the idea as far as uh, what's in store from that standpoint? Yeah, the reaction. But what was, you said 45 minutes? Oh, at least. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Well, you know, an interesting part of that is, too, we almost couldn't traverse from one side to the other uh, without being stopped by people who saw that we were uh, press and asking us to do interviews with them, like, kind of on the spot and stuff like that. So eventually we were, we were just kind of like, well, I mean, dude, you got to get in line, you know, and, and we're actually going to something right now. But there were a couple of times that happened. I mean, they were kind of insulted that we didn't want to interview them on the spot. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, you know, unless it's like, I don't know, Intel or or Microsoft or someone, I, I guess I'm probably not going to blow off who I'm going to interview. Yeah, and wherever you're going, if it crosses through the uh, the Chinese exhibitors, oh, they will eat you alive. Avoid it. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to ask, you know, what, what your experience in the Hilton uh, had, had, had been. Uh, and you know, literally, literally, people grabbing you, literally by the by the shirt to come uh, and get an interview. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so Courtney, how would how would you uh, handle that situation? Um, Gra I, graciously, well, I don't know. Graciously, uh, you, graciously, you would handle yeah, it graciously. graciously. I have uh, I have uh, full full confidence. Now, guys, one of the other things that I had uh, kind of wondered about, of course, I've got the gray hair, or, or I used to have gray hair, now it's white. Uh, but, so I haven't really seen all of CES. Now, what would you recommend for Courtney being a much younger person and, and maybe, you know, uh, re requiring fewer hours of sleep? How would you recommend that she spend her off-duty time? <laughs> um, well... Every night there is some sort of an invitation-only event happening for press. Um, find that list and apply. Uh, <laughs> repeat as necessary. Them. What's that? Uh, then repeat as necessary. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so how will how will Courtney find this uh, this uh, uh, confidential list? Um, they under the press section of CES Web. You can find the list because they're not really invitation only. It's just you can't get in <laughs> unless you're on the list and you can apply to be on the list. So, and they want press there, so they're not like hiding the events. They're on CES web, but you got to look for them a little bit. I know um, Intel did one last year. I see that Lenovo is doing one this year. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Yep. I, I think I, I just I, applied a, for the Lenovo a, one, so I'm on the I'm on the uh, waiting list, and hopefully I'm cool enough to get into it. Um, <laughs> so we'll see. We'll, we'll see. And, but uh, I have to I have to say that in the chat room, um, Mr. Andy Head Hardhat, who will be joining us in Vegas, has said that he will be my bodyguard in case the Chinese hunt me down. Oh, oh! I was gonna say you especially need to avoid that area because. They might just like molest us to death accidentally, <laughs> trying to get an interview. But they will flat on like export you to China, and you will be. A <laughs> <laughs> either that, or either that, or or kind of like you know they'll be bowing down. <laughs> Please grace us with oh. an interview, right? What do you think, Art? <laughs> oh, you guys are gonna make me blush. Uh, but it's like that here in America, so I'm um, I'm used to it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just thought of something really fun for you to try while you're there. I'm not sure if I can say it on the show. Okay. No, we're family. We're a family-friendly uh, uh, outlet uh, here, so may maybe you, maybe we could. Uh, uh, I don't know. You use your judgment, right? Well, it has to do with uh, false impersonation. Hmm. Hmm. What do you think, Courtney? Get the eyebrow up. Got, I don't yeah. know. Got the eyebrow. I'm with you. 
<laughs> okay, well, we'll probably discuss it uh, off the air. Okay, okay, we'll discuss it in there. That, that's uh, that's probably that's probably a uh, that's probably a, a good a good plan. Hey guys, listen, we are really looking forward to having a chance to uh, to to meet you in person and to have a great great time at uh, at CES. Where where can uh, people go to find the Plug Hits site is active? F5 Live dot tv is that correct yes there you go that is active as well f5 live dot tv will take you right to the show page because plugkidslive.com has more than just that it's got uh tech news and music and events and all of the other things that go along with broadcast i suppose yeah <laughs> but okay. f5 live dot tv will take you right to the show page okay well, listen, thanks, uh, thanks very much, and look forward to, thanks, uh, to seeing you. And, uh, Courtney, I'll let you wave goodbye here. Yeah, we'll see you down there, and we'll, I'll talk to you about that whole impersonation thing that um, you have for me. Yeah, yeah we'll, so. we'll see how, <laughs> how, that, how that works out. Okay, well, listen, um, that's uh, the guys from uh, Plug Hits and, uh, uh, and F5 live dot, uh, dot TV that are going to be uh, joining us uh, at CES. That's going to be a really great activity. And the question would be, what does this have to do with RVing? Well, RVers, as you know, are early adopters of all sorts of technology, whether that technology is uh, uh, relating to navigation, whether it's personal devices, uh, smartphones, tablets, apps, all sorts of things. And uh, that's why we're going to be at the uh, uh, show in Las Vegas uh, covering the uh, Consumer Electronics Show. So anyway, thanks to the uh, guys from Plug Hits for joining us. Uh, Courtney, what's uh, on our schedule here for today? Well, we have lots of stuff. So I'll go through my 30 second rundown and that'll tell you a little bit what's coming ahead. Uh, RBN Live is getting a facelift and uh, you just need to stay tuned as we grow in the next couple weeks, uh, especially just uh, the whole CES thing and then post that. Uh, you'll see a fresher face of RVNN Live. And not meaning we're getting new talent. We're just going to be doing some different things, a couple of which we'll preview today. Of course, today's guests uh, were Scott and John from F5Live.tv, so please check them out. Uh, we are now on Google+, Plus, so please circle us. And, uh, hey, we're not going to be here on Friday, unfortunately, but we will be in Vegas. You can check us out at tpn.tv for coverage. And, oh, yeah, Happy New Year. And, oh, yeah, Happy New Year. Yes, indeed. <laughs> this is our first uh, show for the, for the new year. And uh, we've got uh, a couple of things going on. First, I might mention to you that uh, we had a very interesting experience uh, this morning. And you know what I'm going to be talking about. I'm going to be talking about GoToMeeting because we had uh, almost the entire crew from uh, uh, at this particular situation. All of us were remote. So GoToMeeting was the perfect tool for us to have a business meeting which lasted eh, a, little over, a little over an hour, I guess. And uh, since it was on HD faces, we could uh, see through HD cameras, we could see everyone's reaction as uh, ideas went back and forth across the, uh, the built-in uh, audio link. And it uh, turned out to be a really, really great meeting. And uh, you, too, can participate in GoToMeeting. And uh, as you know, there is uh, a, a special 30-day free trial for GoToMeeting. Just go to GoToMeeting.com and look for the red try it now bar uh, red no it's blue yes courtney it is a blue bar uh that a you can bar. Cl that you click on and use the code podcast p-o-d-c-a-s-t this is go to meeting with hd faces a great product uh, we use it uh, almost every day and i think that you'll find that it really will enhance your business one low price per month you can meet as many times as you want for as long as you need so that was uh, one of the things that i wanted to mention uh courtney i've got uh, some news and i've got uh, that new segment we had uh, talked about as well absolutely so you want to hit your your news headline well i i certainly will let me uh, step through that because um I noticed in our script in the, in the in the wiki, it looks like some things may have disappeared. So <laughs> we'll have oh, to no. get that we'll have to get that taken care of uh, a little bit later. I actually had three items that I thought were particularly interesting from our partners at RVBusiness.com. One of them, there is uh, something called the Arvic uh, Expo, A R V C, which is the National Association of RV Parks and Campgrounds. 
Uh, they had a uh, conference back in uh, December in Savannah, Georgia, and they were talking about a, pro a project called T4T, which is Tents for Troops. And uh, what this is, it's complimentary camping to active military and their families. And uh, uh, at that particular expo, they actually added 40 additional RV parks and campgrounds that have signed up uh, for, the pr for the program. Uh, the, uh, there's no obligation for park owners to commit to sites during their busiest periods, but what they're doing is, is on a space available basis, making this available to active duty military and their families so that they can have that family camping experience. Nearly 200 parks now uh, participating in that. Um, the uh, folks at Little Guy, you know, we always talk about the little guy. Uh, the little guy. Yes, the little guy. The folks at uh, Little Guy Worldwide, they have been uh, very, very successful in teardrop trailers. These uh, very small, what they call micro-sized uh, RVs, which make uh, camping and RVing even more affordable to or what they term the thrifty segment of the marketplace. Now it turns out what was really surprising to them, their business grew, business grew over 40% last year. What was surprising to them was that many of the customers were actual R, regular RVers that had gotten tired of uh, hauling around the fifth wheel camper and, <laughs> or trying to tow a, uh, a regular towable behind a, uh, an SUV or, or large uh, pickup. And uh, so they've gone right to the other end of the spectrum. Uh, they've traded in the six miles per gallon and the 40-foot uh, uh, towable for a 500-pound camper that uh, sets up in 60 seconds and can be towed by the smallest car in the world or the smallest car in the market. So, so what do you think? You know, that kind of... It, it, it steers me towards another story I saw today, um, aside from this particular story, but just how uh, manufacturers are producing cars that are so light and so little, and now the RV industry is, is producing these so light and so little uh, campers and things like this, like the story you're talking about, and Ford just released a new uh, vehicle, and I think they didn't release it here in the U.S., but um, they're testing it, and I'm just thinking, how cool is this? Because literally anyone uh, can do this now. Yeah. It's just, it's opening it up to such a broad spectrum of people that maybe didn't have the opportunity before. Mm -hmm. And I just like it. Yeah. I like the way the industry is going. It's not such a, an expensive, extravagant thing to do anymore. I, I think before it was kind of like, oh, you got to really dig deep into the pocketbooks to, to have an RV or a trailer. Uh, but now you can just pull it behind what other vehicle, the smallest vehicle, if you have. Uh, it, it's cool. I yeah. like it. Yeah. Well, and, and I think the other thing is in the uh, little guy price line, uh, they have been uh, featuring this on shows like Price is Right and Let's Make a Deal. Um, but uh, their price point is uh, as low as uh, $5,000, five dollars five to $15,000 for these teardrop, uh, what they were called teardrop uh, trailers, uh, because that's kind of what they're shaped like, which is, of course, aerodynamically very efficient and contributes to the uh, fuel economy. Uh, on the other hand, when you're talking about aerodynamic and, uh, and efficient, the, of course, the Airstream comes to mind. Uh, it turns out that, uh, who, you, do you have any idea who one of the biggest Airstream fans besides Courtney Wallen uh, is uh, in the U.S.? Um, is is this like a Hollywood star or this an actor? Would, or? This would be both Hollywood star and actor, uh, Matthew McConaughey. I was going to say, oh, yeah, I knew it. I knew the you answer. You knew that. You already knew that. And I knew it. I knew that big of, the, of an Airstream fan. In spite of the fact, in spite of the fact it had disappeared from the, uh, uh, from the script. Sorry, that's my fault. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, uh, Hollywood movie star Matthew McConaughey proposed to his long-term Brazilian girlfriend, Camilla all of us, uh, Christmas Day, uh, according to the uh, Who's Say Internet page, uh, in their Airstream. He actually owns three Airstreams. And, uh, as uh, he should. As, 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 he, as he should and as he can. Yes. <laughs> and uh, uh, he currently owns three Airstream trailers, one of which actually is uh, more or less permanently parked at uh, Malibu Beach RV Park with glorious views of the Pacific uh, Coast Highway. But, you know, he Sounds really has some RV uh, cred because he actually started in 1996 in a converted GMC van.
before his uh, career began to take off, and uh, uh, he uh, advanced uh, to to the airstream. And uh, uh, so anyway, it's uh, worked out really well. And in fact, uh, they uh, took off for a 42-day trip in uh, 2009 across uh, across the country. So anyway, if you are uh, a celebrity or if you're not a celebrity, there's a place in RVing for you. Absolutely. I think we may fit somewhere in the middle, right? I think so. I think so. <laughs> so what have we got uh, going on the uh, uh, on your picks and web links? And uh, you, you may have another segment for us as well. I do. I'm going to reveal one of our new segments uh, that will be on every day on RVNN Live. And by every day, I mean we're on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Uh, so let's just start with our normal social media trending topics in the world of RV and travel. Uh, this first one, uh, we have a show called RV Kitchen. We talk about ways to not so much, we don't really share recipes so much, although those are important, uh, easy recipes to make in the RV kitchen, but just tips and tricks and uh, how to manage that kitchen in such a small space. And one of those things we talked about is dehydrating food and things like that. Another thing that I know a lot of people do is they freeze their food. Andy, do you guys freeze things at your house? Oh, absolutely. We absolutely uh, do that. And I'm trying to go ahead and uh, pull this graphic up. Whether or not this is going to work is going to be a different story. Uh, and the <laughs> answer to that is no, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. Well, <laughs> I may have to show the, uh, put this in a post, but what we're talking about, it's the six myths about freezing food. And I have to be honest that sometimes uh, my family members will be like, hey, I made a huge pot of soup. Here's a couple bags of it for you. And uh, I might pull it out in three or four months, and it might be chilly with some beef in it. I don't, I'm a little sketchy if it's okay, and uh, so on and so forth. So this might be something that you and your family do when you're RVing, and it's a smart thing to do. It, it saves money. Uh, you can make a lot of meals and just freeze the rest. So they have myths, and they said, myth, you can freeze all foods, and then they explain it. Um, you can freeze food indefinitely. Uh, no, <laughs> they, not they give a good you the plan. you know not soups, stews, and casseroles two to three months, cooked meat two to three months, uncooked steaks or pork chops. That stuff I find in my freezer constantly because I'll find a good deal, stick it in the freezer. I have no idea when I bought that. Uh, so good to know. Uh, and things that you might be also taking on your RV and trip. So freezing kills bacteria. That's a myth. Uh, frozen food has fewer nutrients than fresh. That's a that's a myth. Uh, and so you just have to check out this website. Just good to know because we know a lot of our RVers do uh, safe, you know, space saving and practical things like dehydrating and freezing uh, to make more of their trip to save a little bit more money. And it's just good to know that what you're doing, you want it to be healthy and safe. I found that article today, thought it might be useful. It actually got retweeted a lot. So I did something right. Yes. <laughs> so our, our community is accepting it. Well, you know, and I think it's one of those things, uh, I believe, one, uh, and I've gone from that page now, uh, but I think there was something in there about uh, 10 rules kind of for, for uh, basic safety in, in the kitchen. And, and I know that uh, people who are really good cooks, who cook a lot, uh, know basic food handling. Uh, if you get a couple of guys uh, out uh, on a fishing trip uh, or, uh, you know, out camping in the woods, uh, you have to be a, a little bit, more than a little bit uh, careful uh, or else uh, your, your trip's not going to be quite as pleasant as you thought. Yeah, you know, I, I'm i okay with certain things. You know, some people are really paranoid if it's been left out for more than a couple hours, don't eat it. You know, I, if I ha have a party and I leave some things out, I might eat it in the morning. But guys, I think just take it to another level, um, and that's I'll leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, well, this next one, uh, I uh, sure hope it comes up because a lot of beautiful uh, pictures talking about uh, the best time to go to certain places. Absolutely. This is the best time uh, to visit national parks in U.S. and Canada. This is from the Lonely Planet, and uh, very, very good source. I love, I love the stuff they shoot out, and it's always good. It's always practical, and uh, so they've got a list here of when it is the best time. Mine's uh, a little slow here, and so you'll have to bear with me. Um, but they've got a little calendar there for you. It's color coded, and. Uh, They've got red is the high, obviously, probably red alert. It is the busiest time of year. And blue is B for best 
time to go. Uh, this is their author pick, and then uh, White is the Low Season. So you've got all kinds of just you know, Big Bend, uh, Bryce Canyon, Capitol Reef, Death Valley, Denali, Everglades, uh, Glacier, Grand Canyon, all these places that all of us uh, either have been to or want to go to. And maybe you didn't have the best experience because it was really super busy and yeah. you didn't get to all the things you wanted to. This is a great calendar. I love this. I am going to bookmark this and use it for future reference because a lot of these places I need to check off my list. So I like to go in the, uh, the Lonely Island, or not Lonely Island, Lonely Planet <laughs> time uh, that they recommend just to really enjoy that experience to the best of its ability. So have yeah. you been to, I know you've been to some of these national parks. Have you been a, a, during a high season or a low season? You know, I think that uh, usually usually in the high season, uh, just because of um, uh, family and school uh, uh, yep. and, and so forth. But now that uh, we're kind of moving to a different uh, phase of life and maybe uh, uh, have a little more flexibility than we did uh, than we did before. I, I, I apologize because I got great photographs i got kind of waylaid and was down <laughs> down the scenery rabbit hole there for a while and said oh she's talking about a calendar so i'll go back and see what all the fuss is about very good yeah tool. you'll have to you i sidetracked you with the sparkly stuff yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah the, the, although those are beautiful and you'll probably be able to take better pictures even when it's a little less busy so uh, like i said last week i will be leaving for two years and uh so I can put that okay. calendar to use. All right, all right, all right. Yes, we've heard, we've heard, we've heard <laughs> that. Like that we've heard that before. Okay, yeah. I'm. Uh, uh, so, go ahead. Well, I'm also kind of uh, uh, stuck here in the uh, in this particular uh, page. So uh, I'll go ahead and talk, talk about the talk next. a little bit here. Yeah, the next um, the the other two articles I found on Twitter or tweeted them out. Of course, you can follow us on Twitter at RV Newsnet. The next is something I posted on our Facebook and Google Plus. Uh, this is 12 U.S. travelers to follow in 2012. I love me some travel blogs. They are fantastic, and there are just so many amazing people out there. Not just interesting to read and watch. Uh, but they just have this sense of adventure that you, you, you want. It just is kind of that, oh, I want to do that. And hopefully it gives me and the rest of you the push to just go and do. And um, this is from Rand McNally. It's called On the Road. It's, like I said, the 12 uh, U.S. travelers to follow in 2012. Some of these are my favorite. Of course, Gone with the Winds got in number one. Uh, they joined us uh, last week, was it? Yes. See, I, the weeks are running together now with the holidays. They were with us in the, in the last uh, week and... Um, we followed them as well and talked to them. So be sure to check out that interview in the show archives. Captain and Clark, awesome couple. If you want to learn how to order coffee in Seattle, check out Captain and Clark. They've got a great video on that. Uh, Traveling Jewels, the McNavigators, uh, Fun Finders, Nanette Cole. Nanette actually was the one that won our RV uh, ID oh, on right. 10 Days of Giving. She's going to be joining us on uh, January 16th on RVNN Live. So write that down on your calendars. American Odyssey, lots of fun. They are a new media couple that's out there shooting videos and RVing. Um, Megan Eileen does this bohemian travel kind of thing. Uh, two Oregonians, that's a new one to me. Uh, and, and the list goes on. So 12 people to follow. If you love travel blogs as much as I do, please check out all of them because there's not one on this list that I am not excited about checking out more if I don't already follow them. So... Um, Andy, do you know how to order coffee in Seattle? I th assumed that it was pretty close to ordering <laughs> coffee in other places, but I know that if you really are into coffee, there's this whole, uh, uh, um, uh, almost a second language to make sure you have just the precise drink that you're looking for. Exactly. I like an extra dirty chai, soy no whip. Tall. Oops. I messed it up. That's... <laughs> They teach you, so don't be like me. Uh, but anyways, that's on our Facebook. Uh, of course, you can always email me, cw at rvnn.tv. If you have any questions, comments, or just want to send me an article or a link that you find interesting. And are you ready for our segment, our new segment of RVNN Live? I, I, am, are... I am ready for the new segment. Uh, let me get it queued up. You explain. Okay, this uh, new segment, every single show that we are on here on RVNN Live, we are going to show a travel app that we find uh, could be helpful or that we use or just is kind of new and would be relevant to our audience. So today's app is called 
ways. I would love to know if you use this app. I actually just downloaded it today. Uh, it's uh, Outsmarting Traffic Together, and guess what? Our viewers are on the road. I used to have an app uh, a couple years ago. It was called Trapster, uh, which if you've used that, Andy, I don't know if you're familiar with that, but it kind of shows you where cops are at. Um, and you can live time have it on and uh, tweet out or, you know, let your audience or let your um, social network on Trapster know that there's a cop on US 31 or wherever you're at. Okay. And you can kind of drop a pin where it's at. So it alerts you. Now, this goes way beyond that. This is a, an app that's good for the iPhone, Android devices. Uh, and you let people know that there is a traffic jam or an alternate route to take. And you know what? We're not always listening to the radio, and the radio may not always tell us that there's a traffic jam on eastbound lane of the toll road or whatever. Uh, this is a great way. It is real time. So you can put hazards, traffic jams, accidents, whatever you want to help your community know what's going on. And especially if you're an RVer that's traveling to a new place, you don't know what's going on. <laughs> you may not even know the right channel to listen to on the radio. Just get your Waze app out, check it out, and uh, you can, it'll obviously locate where you're at, and then you can communicate with other people in that network. Of course, have your co-pilot do this or someone in the back seat. Don't be doing this while you're driving. Uh, but I just really found this useful because nothing is more frustrating when you're so excited about getting where you're going and something happening that could have been avoided, right? Yep, absolutely. And uh, I think that the other thing that's neat about the app, is, as I'm reading here, is that it's it's iPhone, it's Android, but it's also for Windows Mobile, Symbian, and other devices. So it looks like they have really made an effort to get this onto uh, onto as many uh, many platforms as possible. Absolutely. So you know, I'm excited to. I didn't do much driving today, um, but I'm excited to use this. And I uh, did open it up, and I did see alerts in my area. Um, so I will be using this um, on my route to work the next few days and really testing it out more and give you a better report on it. But just really like this. It's free. It's a free app. I should have mentioned first and foremost. Uh, but Waze, check it out. You can go to Waze, W-A-Z-E dot com. W-A-Z-E. Yes. That is, uh, that's just, that's excellent. That's excellent. Yeah. All right. Well, let me go ahead and uh, share the, uh, the the second news segment that we're going to uh, be putting together here each day. And uh, we weren't able to get the highly produced version of it going, but uh, I can go ahead and introduce it uh, in this way. Uh, we are getting ready to uh, start a, a new segment uh, called uh, Geocache Radar. And the idea is that... Uh, this is a Geocache Radar episode one, I guess, episode one dash uh, three, and our particular um, uh, our particular geocache uh, for the day is located near Moultrie, South Carolina, which is just right uh, right on the coast there, as uh, as you can see. And while you're in the the Moultrie area, you can go to historic Georgetown, uh, South Carolina. But uh, the biggest attraction is going to be Lake Moultrie, where there are actually two lakes, two rivers, two canals, 450 miles of shoreline, 171,000 acres of land. This is uh, Lake Marion and Lake Moultrie together, and that means some awesome, serious fishing is uh, possible uh, in, the, uh, in the area. So the cache, is, uh, the cache number is GC39WWB. It has a difficulty of two and a terrain of one. It, uh, the name of it is Hello from WC 2011. The thing that's cool about this cache, it is a brand new cache, and you may well be the first to find. It is at 32 degrees 37 west and uh, 80 degrees uh, 10 and a half, um, uh, I'm sorry, 32 37 north and uh, 80 degrees uh, 10.5 west. And it is so new that uh, we don't even have a star rating as far as uh, the uh, favorite part on uh, geocaching.com. Now, for full details, you need to go to geocaching.com, which is the official global GPS geocache hunt site. And then for show notes uh, on this cache, we'll have that uh, in the uh, rvnewsnet.com forward slash, forward slash uh, live. 
uh, the information I have to say believed to be uh, valid at the time of production, but of course things can change. So you need to use, you know, use common sense, use caution um, when you get into this, and you you want to keep geocaching a fun and family RV uh, activity. Then we'll just uh, make note the fact that Geocache Radar is a production of RV News Net and RVNN TV. Geocache Radar is or will be a member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. So what do you what do you think? Very good. <laughs> I'm impressed. Well, well put together, and uh, now I guess on my two-year trip, I'll have to go to South Carolina and book it down there so I could be the first to find that. However, mm, yeah, I, I don't think I will be. I don't think you're going to be first to find, but I don't know if you looked at the size of those fish. They were they were, they were, were awesome. Yeah, they <laughs> looked pretty huge. I'm going to have to watch this uh, when I'm editing it and zoom in a little more. They looked not small. Uh, look, look, not spar. I'm not sure how tasty they would be, but they were certainly, certainly large fish. Something to brag about, <laughs> and taste doesn't matter it, when bragging is involved. Yeah, I think that I think that's true. Okay, so we're going to um, we're not going to have geocache. Uh, we're not going to have RVNN live uh, on Friday very simply because you know I'm in airplanes. You're you're packing up and and pulling things together uh, uh, here here at the at the studio. What's uh, going to be happening? Uh, next week when people come at five o'clock, uh, what, what, what are they going to see? Well, tomorrow, um, we are going to be taking, taping a uh, geocaching world, which the last couple weeks we've been just doing a rerun of ma- and doing a marathon of geocaching world episodes. But tomorrow we're actually back live on again, starting at six thirty Eastern, uh, chat room will be open as well, but we are going to do a CES pre-show with Head Hard Hat because, of course, he'll be at uh, in Vegas with us. And you know what? I'm excited about to meet him in person. I am the only one that has not gotten that opportunity. So uh, I will get to meet him in person and spend, spend next week with him. But uh, we will be live with him on Skype tomorrow night to talk about CES and uh, more of what to look forward to and uh, letting our audience know that we will be looking for the best and uh, sparkliest, uh, not really sparkliest, but you know what I mean by that, uh, the things that catch our eye for uh, the world of geocaching at CES. So I'm sure there'll be lots of cool things that we run across. Oh, I, th- I think so. I think that's going to be uh, going to be great fun. And, of course, we're going to have um, uh, Andy uh, Smith uh, on uh, as a guest on uh, SDR News uh, as well to kind of talk about what his expectations are uh, for CES. Uh, after he uh, saw uh, some of the uh, back channel uh, video that uh, we covered uh, uh, here in our episode yesterday for SDR News. Yes, we did talk. Uh, sorry, I was reading in the chat room a little bit. Uh, yeah, yesterday's SDR uh, episode, we talked a little bit. And I, it's all kind of running together at this point, I, I must be honest. Uh, <laughs> If it was live, if it was SDR, if it was with Head Hard Hat, or what's going on, I think I might be a confused little puppy once I finally get to Vegas. <laughs> I think but, so. And extremely informed. Uh, but, but extremely, extremely well informed. Yes. yes, yes, indeed. So anyway, that's it. Uh, thanks very much for joining us. Thanks to the folks from uh, F5 and uh, and Plug Hits uh, for joining us here on RVN Live. <laughs>